From some of my earliest video game memories up until today, I've had excellent experience with first-person shooter games. I've also played a variety of other games. But during the pandemic, like many people, I decided to give PC gaming a try. I'm Jammin' J, I'm no professional gamer, but I am an enthusiast and I love to play games, especially first-person shooters right now, Apex Legends, Splitgate, and some Switch games, but that's not as applicable. And I have some advice based on my opinions and my personal experience from moving from console to keyboard and mouse on a PC. Now this video won't be as much about PC specs and what graphics cards to buy, what CPU to buy. There are plenty of YouTubers that can help you with that stuff, but I will give some suggestions about what kind of peripherals you might prefer, and most importantly, general mechanics that you should keep in mind as you're getting used to keyboard and mouse for your first person shooter games and even adventure games. This will be applicable to other types of games as well. This is all based on my casual experience, but should be pretty helpful to pretty much anyone trying to get into PC gaming. Let's get into my five tips. Tip number one, a big mouse pad is more important than an expensive mouse. You'll notice that some of the best controller players have really high sensitivities. This is because they'll have to do quick 180s to find their enemies and to have fast enough movements. I was originally under the impression that mice were the same way, that the really good keyboard and mouse players have really high sensitivities. Now there's always exceptions to the rule, but generally, no. The best players actually have relatively low sensitivities. This is because your movements have to be pretty precise. So the more mouse pad you have to use, the better. A controller analog stick can only do so much. This was the first mouse pad I was using for a while. I kept it for educational purposes. But with limited space, I wasn't able to lower my sensitivities to where I would have liked. So it was really hard to fine tune. And then I got a really big mouse pad. I want to get a proper monitor mount so I can have more space here. But I still have probably about 12 inches by 12 inches for just my mouse. And that made a huge difference. Huge. Go buy a huge mouse pad for 10 bucks and use as much desk space as you can. Just trust me on this one. Tip number one B is if you do not have a mouse yet, as you're shopping for a mouse, uh, consider whether you want extra buttons on it or not. I have personally found that mappable buttons on a mouse are really handy. And if you're going to buy a gaming mouse, make sure it will come with really easy to use software. A lot of people are diehards for this mouse, the Logitech G502. I don't really use it as much, but I enjoy it. I personally prefer my Corsair Night Sword RGB for two main reasons. Number one, it's wider, so it fits my big hands better. And number two, the buttons have a little more resistance and I'm kind of a clumsy person, so I'm not accidentally pressing buttons on it. <laughs> But both the Corsair and Logitech softwares are really easy to work with and I absolutely would recommend mice from either brand. I'm not specifically recommending other brands of mice right now because I haven't tried other brands. I'm sure there are other awesome brands though. Tip number two, in Windows, turn off Enhanced Pointer Precision. This is on by default and it's pretty handy for surfing the web. Enhanced Pointer Precision takes into account the speed at which you move your mouse. For example, if you were to move your mouse six inches slowly versus six inches quickly, when you move it quickly, your cursor will go further across the screen than when you did it slowly. This is not good for building muscle memory when it comes to in-game settings, so definitely turn it off. Because when it's off, regardless of the speed at which you move your mouse, every inch you drag your mouse across the screen will be consistent on the screen, regardless of the speed. To turn this off, navigate to your mouse settings. I would just type in mouse in the search bar and it should come up. Once you're here, click additional mouse options, navigate to pointer options, and uncheck enhance pointer precision. Tip number three. Once you're starting to try and get used to keyboard and mouse, fine tune your DPI, your in-game sensitivity, and your general feel for it in an aim trainer such as AimLab. There are a number of aim trainers you could use. I'm only recommending AimLab because it's free on Steam, and it's really easy to just hop in and get the general gist of it. During this process, adjust your DPI in the software that your mouse came with. DPI stands for dots per inch. It basically measures the amount of pixels that your cursor will drag over per inch that you drag your mouse. 
in layman's terms and oversimplifying it, it's, it's your mouse cursor sensitivity. Most people I talk to have their DPI between 800 and 1200, but you can go as low or as high as you want. Just figure out what you prefer. I personally use 800 DPI. When you're first getting used to this, don't try to be fast, be precise. Be intentionally slow and really precise with your movements. Just trust me on this, it'll be a lot better. I'm not saying start training for one or two hours a day like professionals do. Just hop on it, even maybe once a month, to try and tweak your settings and get them to the most comfortable spot you can. We're not done yet, but if this has been helpful, consider subscribing and please like the video over to right there. Smash the like and subscribe buttons. Join the Discord, follow on Twitch, follow on TikTok. Link for those things in the description. Tip number four, don't be afraid to remap keys. As soon as you open up a game, head over to Keybinds. Make sure you understand what each key does, and if your mouse has mappable buttons on it, use them. I personally find keys like X, C, and G a little uncomfortable to hit, so in-game actions that use those keys generally are on my mouse. And one keybind that I'm actually pretty sold on at this point, in most games I make crouch, alt. So I can easily jump with spacebar or crouch with alt using just my thumb. That's just a preference, but change your keybind so that you can have the most comfortable experience in your favorite games. And my opinions about peripherals. So first, if you have not purchased a keyboard yet, watch videos and reviews about different keyboards. Personally, for some reason, I can't stand really clacky, loud keyboards. So look at videos or even drive over to Best Buy and just touch some of the keys on all the keyboards they've got displayed there. If you find one that you like the feel and sound of, great. I personally use a membrane keyboard from HyperX because loud mechanical switches just don't vibe with me. Next, if you don't have one, consider getting an extra monitor. Now you don't have to buy a brand new one. There are plenty of used monitors out there, and you could even get a really cheap 720p monitor while you're saving up for a nice one. But being able to have recording softwares, Discord, other, other things on your other monitor is just really handy. But you don't have to go overboard and buy the nicest one you can find immediately. Next, while there are gaming headsets that have built-in mics, you might prefer an external mic. Now this tip is a video on its own. I have some videos about this and so does everyone else. <laughs> so without getting too far into it, you can spend as little or as much as you want on a mic, but you might want to get consider getting something cheaper like a Siren Mini for 50 bucks and you could get an arm that clamps to your desk, but I actually don't prefer that because it picks up vibrations and noises that are on the desk itself. So what I use is a $20 mic stand that won't actually pick up any sound from the desk, including thumping the keyboard, bumping the desk, and a humming PC. Just food for thought. And last, this isn't really a peripheral, but unless you can spend a lot of money on an expensive, good gaming chair, I wouldn't waste my time with cheap ones. I have a cheap one and I kind of regret the purchase. I would rather just get a nice office chair at the same price point because it'll last a lot longer and it'll be more comfortable. That concludes my five tips for the day. I could probably come up with a lot of other tips or maybe some streamer specific tips. But either way, if you like this content, I'm making weekly YouTube videos and almost daily TikTok videos and I'm currently streaming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and most Saturdays on Twitch. I would love to see you on my Twitch channel. I would love to be friends on TikTok, Twitter, and join the Discord. We got a lot of people who like playing games and some people who are streamers. And it's not a toxic community. So we're uplifting and kind. So if you vibe with that, we would love to have you. I'm Jam and Jay. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Yeah, that's fun. Guys, how long can I make it? <laughs>